now you work. Okay, great, 20 minutes later. Oh my God. I just wanna record the last three videos. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, okay. What? Okay. Okay, this is it. Last chapter of AP Statistics. Technically there's a chapter 13, but it's optional. In this chapter, we're gonna go back to scatter plots, which was all the way back in chapter two. But instead of just looking at scatter plots and the least squares regression lines, we're gonna actually be doing inference on those least squares regression lines. So confidence intervals and significance tests, but we're gonna be doing them about slope. Um, I thought it might be helpful because we're approaching AP review season to actually spend an entire video just reviewing regression before we get to the inference. Because it's been a very long time since we've done that. So that means in addition to being the introduction to chapter 12, this is also your first official AP review video. There's usually a question on the free response section of the AP test that has something to do with regression. So pay attention to this as more than just an introduction to a new type of significance test. It's also a review of a concept that will definitely be on one of the free response questions of the AP test. Okay, so for this video and actually the next two, we're gonna be using this scenario where we're just wondering if students learn better if they sit closer to the front of the classroom. Our main question is, does sitting closer cause higher achievement or do better students simply choose to sit in the front of the classroom? So does your seat placement actually influence how well you're gonna do or were the people sitting in front always gonna do better? So an AP statistics teacher randomly assigned students to seat locations in his classroom for a particular chapter and then recorded their test scores at the end of the chapter. The explanatory variable here is the row that the student was assigned. So row one is gonna be closest to the front, row seven is the farthest away. Below we have a scatter plot, a residual plot, and a mini tab output. So the scatter plot is over here, bottom left. This is showing us the X variable along the bottom and the Y variable on the uh, vertical axis. And what we can see right away is that as rho increases, so as we get further from the front of the room, it looks like in general scores are going down, but this doesn't look super impressive. It's not a very clear linear pattern. It kind of looks like a cloud. Up here, we've got some information from Minitab. We're gonna come back to that in a bit. And then over here, we have the residual plot. I don't think you have a line on yours, so you might wanna draw in a horizontal line at zero. Remember that a residual is the observed value minus the predicted value. For example, this point right here, this person got 100% and they were sitting in row one. The line predicted that they would get, looks like an 85. So if we take 100 minus 85, that gets us this residual of about 15. So positive residuals are telling you that the line under predicted. Negative residuals are telling you that the line over predicted. And we use the residual plot to see um, if there's a pattern, like was the line better at predicting for kids in the front of the classroom or in the back of the classroom. Okay, the questions on this page are going to take us through the basics of any regression problem, starting with describing the scatter plot. Now, when you see the word describe, you might think visco. That was for describing a distribution of just a single variable, so like a dot plot. For scatter plots, there were a couple things you had to mention. Direction, form, strength, and outliers. So we didn't have a fun um, visco abbreviation. For this scatter plot, I would say for direction, we could say negative. It is going down as rows increase, scores decreasing. Um, it would be positive if they were both increasing, but as one increases, the other decreases. So this is negative. I said it's a relatively weak relationship, so that's the um, strength. You can say that it's a strong relationship if it really clearly fits like a pattern, like a line or exponential growth or a parabola or something, but here I don't see it fitting any clear pattern. Um, somewhat linear, I'm not sure if that's even true. It's not very linear. And we don't have any obvious outliers. So those are the four things you mention um, when you're describing a scatter plot. For the equation of the least squares regression line, we get all of that from Minitab. So if you come up here, it's got on the left rho and constant. Rho was our x variable. So the coefficient of rho, this number right here, is our slope. The coefficient of x, if you think about y equals mx plus b, 
the coefficient of x is the slope. So the coefficient of rho is the slope. The constant is our y-intercept. Once again, think about y equals mx plus b. b, the constant, is the y-intercept. Um, side note, if you didn't know which one was which, you could just look down here and be like, oh, it doesn't make sense for the slope to be 85. 85 looks like it must be the y-intercept. Negative 1 is probably the slope. But anyway, when you're writing the equation of a line, remember that you have to define your variables. So I define my variables right in the equation. But if you used x and y, then somewhere off to the side you have to say x equals rho, y equals score. And I did score hat here. Remember we use hat um, to show that it's the predicted score, not the actual score. Okay, to interpret the slope in context, the in context is really important. Make sure that your answer isn't generic. It should relate exactly to the question. So when students move back one row, that means the row is increasing by one, their score typically decreases by 1.1171. So there's specific context that relates that answer to the question. Same for the y-intercept. If a student sat in row zero, their score would be 85.706. There is no row zero here. This would just be someone sitting on the floor at the very front of the room. Quite often the y-intercept does not make sense in real life, um, but it's still the y-intercept. So we still write it even though practically it doesn't make sense. There is no row zero. R is also called the correlation coefficient. And they didn't give us R, but they gave us R squared. So we can just square root the R squared value. We get 0.217. Now we did have a negative relationship, so R is actually going to be negative 0.217. Remember that r can be anything from negative 1 to positive 1. If r is negative, we have a negative relationship. And if r is positive, it's a positive relationship. So even though the square root of 0.047 gives us a positive number, our r value is going to be negative 0.217. Now just a side note, remember that a strong r value doesn't necessarily mean that the scatter plot is linear. It's possible to have a very curved, like obviously curved data set and have a strong R value. So just because R is close to one doesn't mean that the scatter plot's gonna be linear. You really need to look at the scatter plot to see if that's true. Okay, so next is R squared, which they gave us, 0 0.047. Um, this is that weird sentence that um, is kind of a Mad Lib. 4.7% of the variation in scores is explained by the least squares regression line. And then technically we should have context where we say, it's the least squares regression line that predicts scores based on seed assignment. Remember that it's the percent of variation in the y value that's explained by the line. We want this percent to be large. This is not very good, which we've already seen so far. Like this line doesn't really represent the data that well. Only 4.7% of the variation in the y value is explained by the line, and that's not good. We want most of the variation to be explained by the line. The residual plot we already mentioned. Um, you want to look for no clear pattern. I did note that there are more large residuals in the positive side than the negative side. So that's one thing that we should be a little kind of skeptical of. There's many students that outperformed. Um, other than that, there's no clear pattern. What you want to make sure you don't have is like a horn shape, something where it's very small on one side, all the residuals are close to zero, and then they're all very large on the other side. You don't want that. You want no pattern. If there's no pattern in the residual plot, that means the line is pretty good at predicting. And then last but not least, S, which is the standard deviation of the residuals, tells us the average size of a residual. So typically, this least squares regression line over or under predicts by about 10.0673 points. So the example on the next page of your notes is an example of a free response to question that you might actually see on the AP test. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and do as much of this as you can on, the, on your own, and then we'll go over answers together. Okay, before we even look at questions, I'm going to take this output and just write out the equation of the line, just so that I have it. It'll be easy to refer to then. Okay, interpret the slope of the least squares regression line in context. So in context, when a team wins another game, the number of people in attendance increases by 235 people. And I got that number from right here. It's the coefficient of the x variable. In other words, the more games that a team wins, the more people will attend. Now, just a heads up, this second sentence, if that's all you wrote, that would not be specific enough. It's okay as a follow-up sentence, but it can't be the only thing you write. The actual slope should be somewhere in your answer. 
explain why it's not reasonable to use this model to predict game attendance for zero wins. All right, zero is really far outside of the range of the data points we have. The number of wins we were examining went between 60 and 100. Zero is way out of that range. Um, this was called extrapolation, when you use the least squares regression line to predict values that are way outside of what you studied. Um, extrapolation often leads to inaccurate predictions. So using a line to predict attendance outside of this range uh, may lead to inaccurate predictions. Zero is way too far away from the data we collected. Okay, the correlation coefficient is r, so to find r we just square root r squared. Notice they did not ask us to interpret, so that's all you have to do. Don't have to write anything else. If the point representing 64 wins and attendance of 40,000, so that would be this data point right here. If that point was removed, um, how would the following be impacted? Okay, so if we imagine taking this point away, we would actually be able to draw the line sloped up a bit more to kind of meet this point out here a little bit better. Because this point is so far away from the left side of the line, the left side of the line needs to move up to meet it. So if we get rid of it, now that left part of the line doesn't have to go up so far, so the slope can actually increase. They did say explain your reasoning, so this would be what I would write. The slope would increase, that point is pulling the left side of the line up towards it, so without that point, the line can tilt to be closer to the point on the far upper right. Usually with a question like this, the College Board is just looking for you to compare the re removed point to the other points. That's what I'm doing here. The correlation coefficient is r. Remember that r is telling you if it's a positive or negative relationship and also how strong the linear relationship is. So if I move this point, if I take it out, I think the dots will be closer to being an actual line, so our r value is going to increase. The, that point that we're removing is far away from the line, so if we remove it, it allows the line to fit the data better, which would make r bigger. So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is a good review for AP season. Everything on page one of these notes, uh, those are all questions that you might be asked on a free response question or on a multiple choice question on the AP exam.